personal specific education. We've been shared to Morales uh, phone number, phone numbers, direct personal uh, accounts. And they felt that there's no, there's, there's no going to be a proper uh, accountability. I think the party leader will, will answer that, but uh, also to bring you up to speed, uh, whatever happened in the last uh, six or so months that the movement has been on, three months. three months, he has published it in the social media, you saw the kilometers that we've covered, and actually... ...in the social media, and he has labelled himself as the defender of the president of the Republic of Kenya. What is the take on that? And mostly he says that the young people that are attacking the government uses free Wi-Fi offered to them by the government. Well, I don't know where the cabinet secretary, Honorable Hassan Joe, gets the time to even uh, insult Kenyans on social media. Because those Kenyans who are on social media, if he says that they are idle, they are idle because leaders like him, who are corrupt, have made it impossible for those young people to get opportunities, so they have a lot of time to be on social media. Secondly, I don't think that uh, his level of education and intellect is one that we would want to argue with. Okay, we are definitely more informed than he is, so we'd like him to attend classes so that we, we just educate him a little bit about our country. For example, I can educate him that uh, there is 8.7 trillion worth of niobium at Murima Hill in uh, Lungalunga constituency in Kuala County that he needs to safeguard. There is money that is supposed to be remitted to the Kenyan government by base titanium which has been doing mining operations in Kuala County and is winding up its operations uh, this year. There is gold in uh, Transmara constituency. There is uh, even uh, gold in uh, Western province. There is oil in Turkana. I believe his plate is full. Where he gets the time to do these kind of things is what I do not know. Uh, I believe he, he has a lot in terms of safeguarding our natural resources and not participating in corruption or in online social media skits with young people who are unemployed because of uh, corrupt leaders like himself. So it will be unworthy of the inject party to engage with Ali Hassan Joe. We are a national party. Him is only a kingpin of some area in the coast uh, of people, actually few people who believe in him. So we believe that even if we went to an election with Ali Hassan Joe, we would not garner a quarter of what we would garner in that election. So in this interview, it's completely worthless to have him as a conversation. He is just in the cabinet because he belonged to ODM and ODM was bought into the coalition government. If, if ODM was not bought into the coalition government, he would probably be still doing the same social media that he is insulting people for. Yeah, so Ali Hassan Joe should get his act together. And uh, President William Ruto should present, prevent his ministers, eh? cabinet secretaries like Alias and Joe, from insulting Kenyans who are already angry and hungry from the collapsing economy. Should control them. It needs to be controlled. My mm. last question. Mm. Uh, this is in regards to a certain statement that was published yesterday in regards to one uh, CEO of David Group of Companies. Na red the government of Kenya exempted him from taxes of worthy 11 billion Kenyan shillings. And their main uh, uh, reason for exempting him from paying taxes worthy 11 billion Kenyan shillings is that they are trying to attract more, impo uh, more investors into the country. What is your take on that, uh, knowing that the president has been pushing it so hard for every Kenyan to be taxed. And also, my last question is, inject party really a, reject, a registered party? Because according to the statement that uh, was given yesterday, is that inject party has not yet been approved by the government of the Republic of Kenya as a party. So with regards to those are two questions. Yeah. With regards to taxation, I believe one of my team members can answer with regard to registration. I believe that falls in the docket of the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who will handle taxes. Farida? Um, like to let me just get that on at this point. You can you can okay. come closer okay. to them. Oh, okay. Oh. She can oh, you want to speak, eh? mm -hmm. Just go ahead. Okay, just go ahead. Okay, okay. now with regards to let's start with the party <coughs> registration first of all. So party registration in Kenya, it's a process. It's not a one-day event. Huh? So you first start with the name reservation, 
then you reserve the symbol, you reserve your slogans, you reserve your party colors. So inject party, where it is right now, is at, is at the registration of the symbols, colors, and slogans. The next, and those have been approved by the Register of Political Parties. The next process will now be to upload our constitution and certain party documentation together with the list uh, of uh, the founders and all that. And once that is complete, we will now proceed to we will now proceed now to get a provisional certificate. When you, once you get a provisional certificate, we now start the recruitment drive for all Kenyans, go county by county, uh, registering pe people into our, into our political party. And then finally, we will now get our final registration certificate. So it's a process. We can't complete. There's no political party in Kenya that has ever been registered within a month. It's, it's practically impossible. We are in the process of registering the party, but we have the name reservation, the party slogans, the party colors, and the party symbol all reserved. Yes. With regards to taxation. Um, on, on the question on taxation, this is what we will say. Um, there, there are laws on, on how somebody can be exempted from tax obligations. So it really will be important for, for us to understand and, and to, to verify that the president in making that decision to exempt that particular individual from tax obligations, that he followed the set regulations when it um, pertains to tax law. Yeah. And you know, it actually speaks volumes. Exempting taxes for billionaires while increasing taxes for ordinary Kenyans, that tells you that this is a government that doesn't care at all about the ordinary monanchi. So it's alarming. Yeah, the reasoning and the rationale behind it, of course it will be all create jobs, create jobs, but it's uh, basically the classic move of uh, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Yeah. Yeah, actually, <coughs> let me just uh, on the same same point about the session. Sorry, <laughs> I'm Wafula I'm uh, the communications director of the Inject Movement and such. So to add on the taxation issue, actually that's what uh, that's the exact definition of state capture, where individuals are using their own connections and uh, links to influence policies because that is a policy that they are trying to sneak in through KRA so that they can exempt a particular person to have an favorable competition against other people who are dealing with the same same thing. It's the same same thing that is happening and if you are very keen, the government of Ruto, since they came in power, most of their policies and laws that they are bringing in, they are laws that are making someone somewhere a billionaire when they come up with what we call a shift project, or shisha or shia, what they are doing exactly is they are bringing a system that will bring a new set of people so that they can control the funds, and they are forcing people, because I had uh, the advisor, he's one of his advisors, not a school, I don't know what he advises him, he said uh, students will not be allowed to report to school when they have not been registered on the, the shift system. So what exactly they are doing, they are trying to use the parliament and the executive to bring laws so that they can make money for themselves. When uh, the president pushes for a uh, policy like the new funding model, he's trying to push people to make education very expensive for the public universities, and at the same time he's building a very big university as a U.S. in Gish or a laureate. And that is where he wants to do it, because we will all study. What he will do? Education becomes expensive at more university and university of the Doret, and he makes it cheap at his own university, and people will go there and he'll make money. So it's a very sad uh, state of affairs, and we need to call them out. We need to make sure the policies that come in place they are favorable to each and every person, not one particular person or one particular group of people. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, more questions. That the people that helped Trevor yesterday were part. Some of them were part of your team. Maybe you can just tell us. Uh, uh, maybe when last did they participate, and uh, what roles were they playing on your party, and uh, why did they leave? Okay, so I think that one is meant for me. Yeah. <laughs> or you will answer. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mugane will answer for me. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I can Mr. answer Mr. very well, but he can. Uh, Mugane Mugo. I'm in charge of uh, membership and mobilization, uh, which is an interim position in this party. So uh, first of all, uh, I want to echo the words of our party leader. 
whatever we do in this movement, we do it on voluntary basis. We don't expect payment or reimbursement of whichever kind. So when we have people that have joined the movement and they expect that they will uh, gain some financial, you know, or they expect some financial miracle to happen from us, it is impossible. In fact, some of these people, uh, and uh, some of us who are called into those meetings, some of these people have been bought, and the change of lifestyle is evident. I've seen some of them opening new businesses. I've seen some of them with very expensive watches, which is a miracle that cannot happen within a month of someone that was borrowing fare to come here. So, for us, we are adamant, we are committed to the cause. We cannot be bought because the freedom of this country is not worth any amount of money. Secondly, uh, the, I cannot even remember the last time these 29th. people came. 20, 29. 29th September. 29th September. It's a long time ago. It's a scheme they have been scheming uh, behind closed doors to sabotage the movement. But what we tell the government uh, as well is that you can buy a few individuals, but some of us that are committed to this cause, we are ready to defend our democracy, we are ready to fight corruption with whatever it takes. We are worth more than, uh, you know, those hundreds of thousands that are being dished out to our young people. Thank you. I think the party leader will, will answer that, but uh, also to bring you up to speed, uh, whatever happened in the last uh, six or so months that the movement has been on, three months. three months, he has published it in the social media, you saw the kilometers that we've covered, and actually, even the ampersas that he, he has been using, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are prone to scrutiny. Anyone that wants those reports, as he said, can come here. And right now, the treasurer will handle that. There's a bank account that is in place, and it has three signatories. So uh, every money that has ever come through the party leader has been accounted for and has been used for the right cause of the movement. Thank you. So... What I can add to what Mr. Mugane Mugo has said is that those phone numbers were my numbers before we started doing this. When we started, uh, Kenya started donating to those numbers, I stopped using them for personal reasons and now they were being used by the party. In fact, everybody here can say that they've had access to, to those phone numbers. In fact, even the messages you write to those phone numbers, uh, Dalias has had, you know, to read them and then he briefs us on what is going on. So this is what happens. The reason we had to use a phone number to receive uh, money is because one, to avoid the con, con men. Because when they send the money and the person they know is Morara and they see the name Imeleta Kwempesa Kebaso Morara, they develop a sense of trust. The second issue why we had to use those phone numbers is because we had a lot of support from the diaspora, which we still have to date. There are people who are in the U.S., who are in U.K., who are in Germany who support us and who support the movement to have fuel and to have security. So when they send, they usually use um, platforms like SendWave. Now on SendWave, you cannot send to a pay bill and you cannot send to a till. You cannot send to a phone number. And that phone number has to be registered to an individual. Even if it is not Morara, it has to be someone else. So what we did is we created a 14-member team where seven people come from Inject and seven people come from the diaspora. So we have a team of 14 people, seven who live outside Kenya and seven who are here. And the 14-member committee, what it does is that they budget for money every month. They say, this is what we need. We need to pay watchmen. We need to pay security. We need to pay internet. We need to pay uh, electricity. And we need fuel. We want to do this and this and this civic education in this and this and this place. Once they do the budgeting, then the expenditure is not even done by me. By there, I'm not the one who usually pays. The, we have our finance director here, uh, Farida. She's the one we call. Even when we are at the petrol station, she's the one we send the till number. Then she, she pays from our kitty. Then all the payments we've ever made, the receipts are there. So what you usually do every month, you usually sit down in the boardroom. We put together the receipt and we create an accountability report.
The reason maybe some people feel left out in terms of this accountability is because we are limited. Our hands are tied as regards to how much we can share with you or with the general public. The reason is some of this information is very sensitive and it is critical to our security. For example, where we slept, you know, for example, where we slept and where we paid to sleep is very critical information. Where we fuel, all right, or which car was fueled. Sometimes we leave our own cars and we borrow cars for security purposes. So for that reason, if we publish all information just because we want to make so and so happy, at the end of the day, we will be compromising our own security. And that is why whenever I post to request for financial support, I usually say, support us if you can trust us. So we believe that Kenya still trusts us because to this day, regardless of all the propaganda that goes on out there trying to tarnish our, our names, to this day, there are Kenyans who still believe in us and continue to support us even today, even this morning, even one hour ago, even 20 minutes ago. There are Kenyans who send us 10 bob, 50 bob to support what we do. And we are putting together resources for different programs. For example, we are going to have Vijana Shika ID program where we are going to encourage the youth to get IDs. We are going to have youth registration program to help the youth to register as, um, what do we call it, as voters. We are trying to put together a group of friends to come and support us so that we see whether we can have either a music studio or just cameras for shooting, for helping people with the talent to be able to shoot content in this place or even to record music in this place just as a way of reaching out to the youth and lifting them up with us because when we go up, we want to go up with them. So we have all these programs we are planning. So sometimes we even have resources in the bank account, but those resources cannot be used because they belong to a certain program and we cannot remove it and put it in fuel. Ni mara nyingi sana hata sisi wenyewe tumetumia fedha zetu sisi wote binafsi. Any Kenyan who is out there who is watching us today that feels that they really, really need this information. This is not information that you can publish on our website or on our social media because this is information that will be accessed by both our friends and our enemies. Just come here, give us a notice three days in advance so that the person who is supposed to give you this information prepares the information for you. Come here, sit down, sit down even for two hours or three hours, go through our records, be satisfied, including you who are in the media sector. You can give us a three-day notice. You can come, go through our records one by one, see what we received, how we spent it, what we did with it, be satisfied. At least that way, we will know who accessed our information. So that if we see is out there to tell you so and so and so and so and so and so, are the ones that have accessed this kind of information. I hope you understand. But there's a general, general published thing. Sorry? There's something that is usually published for the public word. Uh, but... Uh, in addition to what is said, there's still accountability uh, documentation and financial reports that's usually published by him in his social media pages. So there's nothing to hide. We are an open and accountable movement that is really strong on integrity, transparency, and accountability. Mm. 